All right, let's do some quick render setup. Uh, what we have now is everything, right? The materials, the smoke, and everything is set it up. Uh, so we're going to consider something about how do we bring this back to the original footage and compose them together, right? So if we're going to do that, we need to break up the render into multiple objects. Uh, I'm going to break up the smoke, the active pieces, and the solid in active base. Those three pieces or three parts of the render into different uh, renders so that I can combine them back together uh, in the compositing. Okay, to do so, I need to use um, different takes. So I'm going to go ahead and look for my object level. And then inside of the rigid body destruction, I have to figure out a way to separate the base from the moving pieces. Now we have a, a a attribute for that, which is active attribute, right? Uh, we have done that at the early stage before we pass in. We have this active, right? It passes all the way along. So we can go for delete. And then I'm going to delete at active equals one. What this does is going to delete the ones that are not, that are active. Oops, we go ahead and take a look now. We have only the inactive part. I'm going to call this one base. Holding down Alt and drag it over. I'm going to call this one active. And then active will be delete non selected. It's going to be the top. Right. I'm going to go back to the outside and then turn off that. And then I'm going to create two new geometries. Let me do one here first. I'm going to call this guy mm, base. Right. And go inside of it, delete that file. I'm going to go for object merge to actually merge in uh, the rigid body destruction and look for the uh, base. And then Alt drag to duplicate base. Right, I'm going to name this guy active and instead of it, I'm going to again change object merge to active. All right, so now I have three things to render. Smoke, base, right, and active. And we don't need anything else, so anything else will be disabled. Right, those are disabled. Uh, now, if I do a render, I should see the same results. But what I want to achieve is that I can render the smoke without anything else, but I want the things that is blocking the smoke, for, for example, those leading debris, uh, if they're blocking the smoke, my smoke render will be cut out. To do so, I need to use um, a cutout functionality here. Okay, so anything, any uh, geometry, if you go ahead and look for render tag and then check on match shading, do a render, it's going to be used to cut out instead of being rendered. As you can, you can see now, I don't even have the top anymore. You can check the alpha by going to the bottom one and look for alpha. You can see it's cutting out, right? And we can also go to base and say, I'm gonna cut out the base too. Now you can see we only get the smoke and the areas that is blocking the smoke will also cut out the smoke. Okay, that's, that's, this is exactly uh, what I want. Stop this, the uh, render. Go back to RGB, right? you can see. Everything else is gone, right. uh, but I don't want to manually do that and do three renders, right? So I'm going to go ahead and check those guys back. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually using takes. So go to this take list, grab the man. I'm going to add a take underneath it. I'm going to call this one smoke. Go back to man again, add another take. I'm going to call this one uh, active. And this is another take. Oops. Let me delete that take one. I just created it. You have to go back and grab the man and add take. And this one is going to be the base. Right. 
Oops. Okay, we have three takes. I'm going to switch to active take and go back to the settings here. Uh, for the smoke take, I'm going to go to the geometry and right click on map shading and say include intake and check that out. And also, um, uh, the that's our active layer or active take. I'm going to check on the mesh shading for the base and the smoke. Okay. So I'm when I'm rendering this particular take, I will see only the active part, but nothing else. Just take a look and make sure make sure that we're getting the right thing. Uh, apparently, we're not. Uh, let's go back to the out and grab the mantra render. Let's see. Uh, it's rendering the man. Let's go back to the uh, man here and change the render with take to current take, so that way it's uh, it's going to update to any take we're in. So let's switch back to active. You can see now it's rendering only the uh, active part and the smoke part and also the um, base part they're used to cut out. So now if you check the alpha, we're having this uh, alpha like this, right? which is exactly what I want for this active take. Right, we'll stop that. I'm going to set up the other two takes. So base take. For base take, again, I'm going to go to object and I'm going to check on the mesh shading on the smoke and active including take and check that out. So now if I do a render for this particular take base I should, I should be able to see only the base being rendered and again the smoke and the deep rays flying out those guys are going to be used as cutouts to cut out uh, the base. Yeah, our car again, you can see the smoke is blocking it. Cool. Now, one more, which is the smoke. Right? For the smoke take, I'm going to say active will be, we can actually check that down right away. <laughs> Base and check that down. So that we're cutting out everything else but the smoke. Cool. So all three takes are done. Stop it. So that's the takes. Um, let me switch back to main take. The main take will still have everything inside of it. Another thing I want to talk about is the render image plans. Image plans are render passes or AOVs or render element. If you're familiar with all other renderers, uh, let's go back to the mental IPR. I'm gonna go for image. Uh, extra image plans and here I'm going to set up some extra image plans. I'm going to click the plus button here. And the first one I'm going to set up is the direct light, direct lighting and I, I'm going to change the light exports to export variable for each light. What this one does is now if I go for a render it will separate the render content from different lights into different render image plans and also uh, it will separate the direct lighting effect from those lights. So now if you go to this little uh, expansion here, this little menu here, you can see I have decent light direct lighting and environment direct lighting. Those are informations uh, extracted from the original or the final image here, color. So this one, this distant light one direct will be the direct, direct lighting result from the distant light as you can see. And the other guy will be the environment light results over here. Okay. Uh, if you don't see the smoke, uh, the problem could be, or you don't see others, it could be the in the material uh, part of the objects. The render smoke, uh, you have the material here, that's fine, but you go inside and assign a new material here and also assign the same material, otherwise uh, it's using two different systems because in our rigid body destruction, the material is set it up using this material node. If you don't have that node, also in the uh, smoke, uh, you will have some trouble doing the render uh, 
image planes. So be aware of that. Let me go back to my alt and grab the mantra IPR. Right, that's our mantra IPR. Again, I'm adding this direct lighting result, and I also ask the renderer to separate different lightings inputs or effect into different image planes. So I have two because I have two lights. Uh, if I have one more light, I will have one more here. Okay. Let me add another one. Now we have direct lighting now. Let's add in also indirect lighting. Oops. You cannot really see that though, but it's it's in the list. Go all the way to the to the second section. You have indirect lighting right after direct lighting. Actually, way below the direct lighting. Just indirect lighting here. Uh, I don't really need to separate indirect indirect lighting from all different lights. The reason being is because um, it's not that visible, anyways. Let's take a look. So the indirect lighting here now is just a little bit like that, so I don't really worry too much. I just need it. We have direct lighting, indirect lighting, we're missing the fire. The fire is actually the emission, so I'm going to add a new one. And this time I'm going to choose uh, emission, so direct emission should be good. I'm not sure we have indirect, indirect emission or not, but let's see. Uh, the emission is going to be the fire. Okay. Cool. Now one more thing, which is the AO. We can add the AO right here. So I'm going to plus there and check on occlusion right here. Now we have one more called OC. That's, that's the AO. Apparently the smoke doesn't have AO. So I guess this is one of the limitations. I do believe you can you can set that up, set that up, but I'm not really worried about that. All right, that's the render image plans. We basically need those four. You can keep adding new ones if you wanted to, but I'm just going to settle down with it. These ones on the top of presets, uh, you can check on combined emission. You have one more called all emissions. Right? So either use this or add your custom ones. They're basically all adding something here. Uh, but I am intend to just do that in this way. Okay, cool. So that's gonna be the image plan. So we have set up we have set it up three takes. Now every take will have the same image image plans. Like direct lighting, right? Uh, India lighting and environment lighting and just like that. That's the base one. And we can go to the smoke. You can see the smoke has a direct emission, direct lighting, uh, environment lighting, indirect lighting, right? all those kind of things. So yeah, uh, this is going to be the setup of the render. And eventually, we want to somehow click once, and it's going to render all three takes. Right? We don't want to render one take. When it's done, we have to go back and click on render again after switching to another take. Right? So that's going to be the wedging result um, feature we're going to use here to achieve that. So I'm going to create a wedge node. Wedge is a render operator or wrap. And wedging can actually be used to render multiple variations of the mantra IPR renderer. So I'm going to switch back to man, alt drag the mantra IPR to output driver which is telling wedging, okay, you are going to be iterating or do multiple uh, renders using this renderer. Now, how many times? Uh, it's going to be based on how many takes we have, right? We have three takes. So wedge method will be by takes, by take. So every time, so if you have three takes, it's going to render three times. Every time, it's going to be a different uh, take. The parent take will be the main here. So type in main. What well, this means is it's gonna look for the man, oops, the man take, and then see all the children take of the man take, which is if you look at the take list, we have man and those three are the children of the man take. And it has to be the direct children. Okay. Uh, so when I go to the wedge and click on render wedges, it's gonna go ahead and start rendering all three takes one by one. All three takes that is the children that are the children of the uh, 
are the children of the man pig. It's gonna uh, render one by one and do it, of course, three times. And uh, the naming here in the mentor IPR, then you have to go to the uh, uh, images and output pictures. You have you have to put in dollar sign uh, wedge or uppercase. This guy. Uh, what this means is gonna put in a wedge. Uh, suffix so that you can differentiate three different takes. Uh, the prefix will be that, so the name will be underscore wedge, underscore take name, which is active, smoke, and base. So the name will be rendered, the name will be uh, render test rendering, underscore wedge, underscore active, dot the frame number, and then dot extension. Right, so that's going to be how it's going to be named. If you don't have this dollar sign wedge, then the second tag you're rendering will be overriding the previous tag that I take. So you don't want that, right? So this is necessary here. Dollar sign wedge, very important. And then you can go ahead and say render wedges, right? If you click on that, it's going to start rendering. I have rendered it already, so let me change it to something else in case it overrides that. So just to ask maybe just to show you if you just go ahead and click on a render wedges, it's gonna start rendering it. Go from one to one fifteen. It's gonna render all three takes. Alright. Let me interrupt it to stop that. Okay. Uh, when you interrupt you will get those warnings, don't worry. It's just because you interrupted it. Interrupted it. So uh uh, all right, so that's gonna be the render setup. Again, we set up the we set it up the image planes, all the essential ones. Uh, we set up the wedging to render all three takes, which is basically the render layer kind of thing in Maya. If you're familiar with that. All right, we're gonna stop the tutorial here. In the next one, we're gonna take a look at our render result and go ahead and do our compositing. Okay, see you next time.